sportsmanship, character, skill, and a burning passion for the game of hockey. This is the legacy of Patty Kazmaier, the ultimate teammate with an insatiable desire to achieve excellence, inspiring future generations of women's college hockey. Today, these are the women who follow her lead. The shot All season, they've competed. They've clashed, pushing each other to be their very best. Now, one will have her name engraved into history. As this year's Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award winner. Good morning and welcome to the 25th annual Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award Ceremony. I'm Jamie Hirsch and I'm so excited to be here with you to unveil this year's top player in NCAA Division I women's ice hockey. The 2021-22 season was full of ups and downs, but Ohio State made history last weekend as the Buckeyes won their first national title in program history, defeating Minnesota Duluth 3-2 in the championship game. The women's game has grown by leaps and bounds, both at the collegiate level and the international level. The Winter Olympics took the world by storm in 2022 as the U.S. won a silver medal in Beijing. And USA Hockey will host the IIHF Under-18 Women's World Championship in Madison, Wisconsin this June. And for the first time ever, the teams will compete for an IIHF Women's World Championship in the same year as an Olympics this August in Denmark. That's a lot to look forward to, but let's get back to why we are here today. The Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award was started by USA Hockey through the USA Hockey Foundation to bring visibility to women's ice hockey. Named after an absolute legend of women's ice hockey, the award recognizes the most outstanding player of the NCAA Division I women's hockey season. USA Hockey has led the way over many decades in developing the game in the U.S. Of the many signature initiatives, USA Hockey started and ran what is today's NCAA Women's Frozen Four, and its former president, Walter Bush, provided the impetus to add women's ice hockey to the Olympic program. With that, it is my pleasure to welcome in the executive director of USA Hockey and the USA Hockey Foundation, Mr. Pat Kelleher. Thanks, Jamie. When the USA Hockey Foundation started this great honor a quarter century ago, it was with the intention of providing additional visibility and celebrating our sport through honoring the top player in NCAA Division I women's ice hockey each season. The vision included providing young girls role models to help inspire them to achieve their dreams while also influencing the growth of the game, particularly among girls. Fast forward to 2022, and it's easy to see how that vision has become a reality. With more girls playing hockey than ever before, and the stories of Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award nominees, finalists, and winners contributing significantly to the ever-growing landscape of hockey throughout the world. Today, on behalf of our president, Mike Trimboli, and the more than a million coaches, players, officials, and volunteers who make up USA Hockey, we're all excited to learn who will join the exclusive club of Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award winners as the 25th recipient. We're fortunate to have great partners involved with the Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award each year. I'd like to particularly thank the National Hockey League, the NCAA, Sports Engine, and of course, our broadcast partner, the NHL Network, for their outstanding support. A special congratulations to our three finalists, Taylor, Gabby, and Sophie. You've all had remarkable seasons and know that we're extremely pleased to honor you all here today. And finally, a heartfelt thanks to the Kazmaier and Sant families for their tremendous impact they have had within the women's hockey community over the course of many years. Thanks again, Jamie, back to you. Thank you, Pat. It is wonderful to see all of the work USA Hockey continues to do for women's hockey. There were some amazing performances throughout the 2021-22 NCAA women's hockey season, which made it that much more difficult to narrow down the list of candidates for the Patty Kazmaier Award. Here's a look at the incredible seasons from the 10 nominees. Introducing the 2022 Patty Kazmaier Award nominees. Skylar Fontaine, Northeastern University. 
A top 10 finalist for the second consecutive year, this Husky grad student was named a first team All-American as well as an All-Hockey first team selection. Trying to stop it front, they score! Her 48 points were second nationally among defenders, and she was the lone player in the country with 70 or more block shots and 40 plus points. Skyward Fontaine, her motor never stops. The Rhode Island native volunteers with the Special Olympics, a local elementary school, and as a coach for Unified Sports. Aaron Frankel, Northeastern University. The winner of the Patty Kazmaier Award in 2021 and now a grad student eyeing a master's in organizational leadership, she led all NCAA goaltenders in wins with 25 and for the third straight year earned All-America First Team honors. One timer kicked away, big rebound, ball and a save by Frankel. The New York native was second in the nation in both goals against average and save percentage and her 11 shutouts led the country and set a single season record for the Huskies. Elizabeth Jaguer, University of Minnesota Duluth. A top 10 finalist last year and the 2020 recipient of this award, she posted 15 multiple point games this season, including eight with three or more points. Back out for Jaguer who fires and UMD is on the board. A fifth year senior, she ranked second in the nation with 62 total points and 40 assists and earned all America second team honors in helping the Bulldogs finish as national runner ups. Alina Mueller, Northeastern University. This senior forward has been selected as a top 10 finalist during all four years of her collegiate career. This season, she tallied 39 points off 11 goals and 28 assists in just 21 games. Mueller, score! And also played for Switzerland's Olympic hockey team for the third time, helping the squad to a fourth place finish in Beijing. Casey O'Brien, University of Wisconsin. The only sophomore among the top 10 finalists, this Badger forward led the NCAA with nine game-winning goals. The Massachusetts native finished fifth in the nation with 25 goals and her 55 points ranked eighth in the country. Backdoor shot and a goal! Away from the ice, she volunteers at both the YMCA and a local elementary school and participates in the Badgers Give Back program. Teresa Schafzal, University of Vermont. The Austria-born senior earned All-America First Team honors and was named the Cami Granado Hockey East Player of the Year after leading the conference with 21 goals, 39 points, and a plus 28 on ice rating. Schafzal in, shorthanded, score! The Catamount forward was the lone unanimous First Team All-Hockey East selection and earned League Player of the Week honors on four separate occasions. Daryl Watts, University of Wisconsin. The second Badger among this year's finalists, Watts earned All-America and All-WCHA First Team honors. She finished tied for third in the NCAA with 28 goals and her 57 total points ranked sixth in the nation. Makes a move towards the net, round and round and one of the best moves you'll ever see. The 2018 Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award recipient is part of the Badgers Give Back program and a Save the Children sponsor. Now in alphabetical order, here are the top three finalists for this year's Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award. Taylor Heisey, University of Minnesota. The senior forward led the NCAA with 66 points, earned All-America First Team honors, and was named WCHA Player of the Year. Her 29 goals were second in the nation, and her 37 assists tied for fifth. She also led the country in shorthanded goals with five. Taylor Heisey absolutely buried one. Off the ice, the Golden Gophers spoke at her high school alma mater, volunteered for a food donation drive, and served as a volunteer coach during Girls Hockey Weekend with the Minnesota Wild. Gabby Hughes, University of Minnesota Duluth. An All-America and All-WCHA first team selection, the Bulldog senior helped her team to a national runner-up finish. Shoots and she scores!
She tied for third in the nation with 59 points, including 22 goals and 37 assists in 40 games, and was also fourth in the country in faceoff percentage at 56%. A 2022 hockey humanitarian finalist, the Minnesota native helped found a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving the mental health of student athletes. Sophie Jakes, Ohio State University. The first team All-American helped lead her Buckeyes to the school's first ever national championship this season. An All-WCHA first team pick, who was a seven-time WCHA Defender of the Week, she was the nation's top point-getting blue liner with 59 points, including 21 goals and 38 assists. Her 10th power play goal of the year. A teaching assistant in the Ohio State College of Engineering, the Buckeye Senior is the co-vice president of an organization that works to provide a safe space for female minority student athletes. And there you have it, the top 10 finalists for the 2022 Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award. And here they are, Taylor Heisey, Gabby Hughes, and Sophie Jakes. The three finalists for the 2022 Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award alongside their friends, families, teammates. Congratulations to all three of you ladies for remarkable seasons. You are all certainly deserving of this honor. But sit tight for a little longer. We're not revealing the winner just yet. The Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award dates back to 1998, and its namesake was a gifted scholar athlete at Princeton who represents the spirit, character, and excellence upon which the honor is based. Although Patty passed away in 1990 at age 28 while battling a rare blood disease, her legacy lives on through this award each year. Here's a word from her daughter, Serena Vizi. Thank you, Jamie. It's so hard to believe that it is the 25th anniversary of the Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award and how much the sport of women's ice hockey has grown in support and popularity in that time. If my mother was still with us, I wholeheartedly believe that she would be so proud of the players and honored to be considered a trailblazer and a role model for so many young women. As a mother of a little girl myself, I am blown away by the opportunities that are now available for young girls and women that were not there a mere quarter of a century ago. My family and I cannot thank USA Hockey, the NCAA, all of the sponsors, and everyone that has made all of this possible, as well as keeping my mother's memory alive with this award. Congratulations to all of the nominees and a special congratulations to today's winner. Welcome to the Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award family. Back to you, Jamie. Thank you, Serena. Coming up next, we'll chat with some Patty Kaz winners of the past. Kendall Coyne Schofield, Jennifer Botterill, and Chrissy Wendell join the show after the break. Welcome back to the Patty Kazmaier Award Show. Over the 25 year history of this award, we have seen some remarkable women take home this honor. Women who have gone on to win multiple Olympic medals, build careers in hockey, and create a path for the future of women's hockey. Let's welcome some of those women in right now. We have with us the 2016 winner from Northeastern University, Kendall Coyne Schofield, 2005 winner from the University of Minnesota, Chrissy Wendell, and the only two time recipient from Harvard, 2001 and 2003 winner, Jennifer Botterill. Let's start with the most recent winner of these three remarkable women. Kendall, take us back to six years ago when you were anxiously waiting to hear your name called for this prestigious award. What do you remember about that day? Well, it was it was a, an anxious day, like you said, but I think what I remember the most is just seeing the teams there for the Frozen Four in New Hampshire and just wishing that I was in the other seat in that moment because you want to be there, you want to be in the final, you want to be, worth it, be there with your team. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, while my entire team wasn't able to be at the uh, Patty Kaz ceremony, there were um, a group of seniors who actually surprised me uh, in New Hampshire. So when I saw the red Northeastern van pull up, I was like, what are they doing here? So that really uh, made it special. Yeah, and I know that these three finalists today all have teammates with them as well. So that's such a huge part of this award, right, Chrissy, is, is all, also what it means to your program. You are one of just two Gopher women to this point to win it. What would it mean for Minnesota to get a third Gopher woman if Taylor Heisey wins today? 
I'd be awesome. Yeah, I can say I'm rooting for her. She's uh, from Red Wing, which is actually where my husband's from. So um, small world there. But yeah, even when I was up for it in 2005, Natalie Darwitz was also up for it in the top three. And and honestly, you could have picked it out of a hat. So um, she's an incredible player that's not on that list, but obviously more than accomplished and um, certainly more than deserving to also be added in that conversation. Yeah, we're showing video of you here rocking the maroon and gold there with Minnesota. Uh, it's been a few years, of course, since you took home the top honor, but certainly well-deserved. And what a career for you with the Golden Gophers. And Jen, as I mentioned, you were the only woman to this point to win this award twice. That's such a testament to how talented you were then and still are right now in various capacities. But what do you remember about those two wins and kind of how you felt differently in 2001 versus 2003? Well, it, it's certainly still very special to to reflect on on those opportunities. And I think the biggest thing that stands out from those um, special moments, the special weekends of, of celebration was the reflection on on your teammates and that I had the pleasure uh, and the opportunity to be surrounded by great teammates. And, you know, Andrew Gere was just in the last shot of one of those highlights and to have played, you know, with AJ Malesko and and I think Julie Chu's in that one. So I think really these awards were a representation of, of our teams. And, and I think that's just for me when I look back and I reflect, uh, certainly an amazing honor and certainly to be connected and, and associated with Patty and her character and her spe spirit and her leadership um, is still one of the biggest highlights of my career. But it's certainly important to note that it's a reflection of my friends and my teammates that were such a part of, of our team's success. So I think that's what it was, is reflecting, feeling grateful and very thankful and huge levels of, of appreciation for the team that I had the chance to, to be a part of and, and friends that, are, that I still have and friendships that are, are very important in my life to this day. So I know that for all three of us, we had the chance to be a part of great schools, great teams. And, and I think the award is certainly a reflection of that as well. We are, of course, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award. So, Chrissy, even though you know it's been a, a while, how have you seen the game grow since you won the Patty Kaz several years ago? Yeah, it's been awesome. You know, I think I get a first-hand look now with the next generation having three girls, 13, 11, and 10, and just seeing how much the game's grown, even from the younger levels all the way up. It's um, the, the level and the depth of the players. is It's a really fun game to watch. And not that it wasn't before, but, um, you know, I think the more players you have that are just pushing each other, and um, it, it's incredible. It's a fun game. Um, but, yeah, certainly has grown a lot since you saw those last highlights. If you show Kendall's highlights compared to the ones, you know, 15 years, they're obviously <laughs> very different. Yeah, we do have plenty of highlights to show from Kendall, <laughs> of course. Captain America, as I like to call her, uh, leading the U.S. to gold. And then silver this past Olympics as well. So, Kendall, even in the six years since you won this award, how has the college women's game just exploded even more? Oh, it, it's unbelievable. I was I actually had the opportunity to be at the Frozen Four um, in at, at State College at Penn State uh, when Ohio State captured, um, you know, the national championship. And, and you just have seen, to Chrissy's point, you've seen the depth, um, you know, not just, you know, the, in the first two lines, like it may have been, you know, when I played, you see the depth in, in all four lines and, and the defensemen and the goaltenders and you see the pace that has improved, the speed, um, you know, the skill. Uh, it's, it's, it's gone up so much even since... Uh, I played six years ago. So, Jen, what does life look like now for you? Because you're still very much involved in the hockey community. Tell us what you're doing. Uh, well, thank you. Yeah, and I, I've been uh, fortunate enough to stay connected with the game in a different capacity to, to be an analyst for the NHL. Uh, so it's something I really love. But I think for all of us, when we look back and the opportunity to win this award um, really set us up as well for future success. And if I look at the, the many different um, sort of elements of criteria that you think about, um, and we want to be great people. And I know I continue to watch Kendall and Chrissy and to admire what they've accomplished and continue to accomplish in their lives and their careers. I think the the award that was named in, in Patty's honor was also about that, about being a great person and, and staying involved and, and being a great teammate and showing sportsmanship at every level of, of your world. And so I think for all of us, we've learned from that and tried to continue to, to share that with the people around us. So for me, I've loved being connected to the game to provide my perspective and, and insight and hopefully bring people closer to the game and to enjoy and to appreciate the game 
um, even more. So I feel very thankful, but I know that the chance to win this award was a big step in my life and my career. I see the other two ladies, of course, nodding along, agreeing with everything that you're saying. And Chrissy, when you think back to winning this award and everything that's happened since then, how did winning that award change kind of the scope of your career or the direction of your life? And how have you tried to continue to stay in, involved in the game and give back? Yeah, it's funny. It's almost like you win the award and then you feel like you need to like live up to that honor of winning <laughs> the award because there's so many other players that are deserving. And, you know, to be in a category when you look at that list and see the names on that list and like uh, Jen talked about Patty and what she represented and you're kind of in a different category. And, you know, it's kind of for me, there's a little bit of an expectation of like, OK, what are you going to do next and how are you going to represent yourself? And um, certainly it's a it's a honor to be in that category. Kendall, do you echo those thoughts? Absolutely. And I think one of the most important pieces, there's two of them. One, it's uh, who Patty Kazmaier was, who her family is. And that's one thing I will always cherish and remember uh, from the ceremony is being able to meet her family um, and just, you know, listen to what she, who she was. Obviously didn't have, you know, the, the opportunity to, to meet her, but win an award in her name and what she embodied and, and just really who she was off the ice and the incredible player she was on the ice. So to be able to hear those stories about her and to then win an award named after her is an incredible honor. And then to, to Jen's point, I think when you look at the history of the previous winners, all those winners were on phenomenal teams. And this award is not one without being surrounded by incredible players and incredible people. And, you know, when my time at Northeastern, uh, that was the first ever uh, team to make the NCAA championship in Northeastern history. And to see the program grow and soar uh, from, you know, that, that se my senior year when we made the NCA tournament, uh, it just shows this award is not possible to win without those who are surrounded by you. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're totally right. And this year we're seeing more history, of course, with the Ohio State women taking home their first national championship in program history. So, Kendall, I know you're still very actively involved in the game. You're still a player, for goodness sake. You just got off the ice at the Olympics just about a month or so ago. Uh, but how do you think that the game could continue to grow? I mean, we're talking beyond college, right? Like, what would you like to see really happen from the women's game uh, in order to grow the game even further? The three student athletes that we're going to see here today, I want them to be able to walk across the stage proudly and know that they can make a living playing professional hockey if they if they wish to do so, because we know they're good enough. There's a reason they're in this conversation for this award. And when they walk across that stage as student athletes, they deserve to be professional hockey players and compensated as one. Absolutely. Jen and Chrissy, I see you guys nodding along as well. Jen, when you think back to your college days, uh, what were the options for women to continue to play after college back then and how how have you seen that develop a little more right well way back in my era <laughs> I mean, at least we're seeing a few more choices for kendall but i think a huge credit to both chrissy and to kendall for um what they continue to do for the game and and f at my stage you you played it was sort of described as as club hockey your senior hockey where you traveled to to that team but I think it's important to note about stands that, that Ken, Kendall's been an integral part of uh, with taking a stand for equality mm -hmm. and for opportunity. And it's not about Kendall and her teammates and the members of PWHPA or what they want to accomplish. I think what I've been most impressed by is for them, they want it to be the future, whether it's the finalists for the Patty Kazmaier Award or if it's girls that are five or six or seven years old and, that want to have the choice to play hockey and have these players to strive towards. I think it's, it's, it's it's not only about those professional contracts and the sustainability, but it's saying what impact will that have on young kids growing up and that what they have to look towards and to strive towards and have those dreams and those goals that are so, so important. I mean, you know, I feel like my kids have been reading Cami Granato's book that, you know, <laughs> and that, you know, about playing again. And I feel like my, my four and a half year old, I woke her up one morning at seven for hockey, opened up her curtains. She opens her eyes and she's I was just dreaming about Mimi, like the character in the book who Aww. got to play hockey, the girl, little girl who got to play hockey. So I think about the stand that the players are taking today, what they believe in. Um, I think that's about certainly decades and decades of exciting choices for players down the road. Yeah, you mentioned Cameron Granado, a former teammate, of course, of yours, Chrissy. And what has it been like to see her continue to rise now as an assistant general manager uh, of uh, an NHL team? You are a, a pro NHL scout now for the Pittsburgh Penguins as well. I mean, these are probably things that when you were in college, you didn't think were really possible because we weren't seeing it. That's exactly it. There wasn't the opportunity. And I think... Um 
to both Jen and Kendall's point, if you can see it, right? And you can see that. And Cammy's kind of been an inspiration. And, um, you know, she's writing about it now. And kids can identify with that. And I think it's easier to aspire to something that is visual. And you can see and see somebody else kind of pave the way. And um, it's a little bit more clear. Um, Cammy was like that for me, getting involved in the NHL side and um, more on the business side. And to see what she's done, her leadership skills speak for themselves. She's an incredible leader. And she brings a lot to that organization. And it's see, great to see her in a role where she can... Um, you know, have that influence on others. But speaking of books, uh, Kendall, my daughter read your book and, you know, speaking to growing the game. Uh, yeah, she loved it. And she had to be like a wax museum. And my 11 year old was Kendall Coyne. And it's cool for, you know, to see the next generation inspiring kids. And it's, but they can, again, they can see it. They watch her in the Olympics. They see her, she's smaller and she's fast. And she felt like she was connected to, to Kendall. So That's I think awesome. things like that are, are what's inspiring the next generation. And we'll keep kids uh, playing and, and motivated and excited about the game. Yeah, that's Kendall Coyne Schofield's book just out now recently as fast as her. I read it as well. And Kendall, uh, you really are still such an inspiration to so many. And, you know, while we are all women here and it's great to talk about other women and young girls, I want to also point out that it's important for young boys to see women like you all out there continuing to raise the level of play and raise the bar for success and what that means for women throughout the world of hockey. So, Kendall, maybe you can speak to that. In your experiences of meeting so many fans, uh, have you also had little boys come up to you and say, wow, I, you know, I want to be like Kendall. I want to skate as fast as her. Oh, of course, um, especially in my role as a player development coach and a youth hockey growth specialist. You know, I get to work with the, the little kids and the big kids um, in Chicago and, and, of course, all over all over the world. But, um, you know, the young boys and the young girls I work with all summer long, you know, they they all they have the same questions. They have the same dreams. Uh, they love the game equally. And, you know, when I get on the ice with with our players, um, you know, who have aspirations to play in the NHL or conversations with them, while I may be the first female coach they ever had, they, they look at me as their coach. They don't look at me any differently uh, because I'm a woman and, and not a man. And so I think it speaks, you know, to the importance of, of growing this game equally, you know, from the from the grassroots level on up, because um, at the end of the day, you know, these, these kids see us at a young age and, and they don't think twice about uh, why is my coach a woman and not, not a man. I've only had male coaches my whole life. Now these kids are growing up, they're having, they're seeing females and males um, in the roles that, you know, Jen, um, and Chrissy, Chrissy are in now and, and others and Cammy around the league. Um, and, you know, the growth just continues uh, to soar. Well, you three are all pioneers in your own right. Thank you so much for taking some time for us here as we celebrate 25 years of the Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award. When Thank we, you so much. When we come Thanks. back, we'll talk with the three finalists for the 2022 Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award. Stay with us. Comes in, left wing circle, shot, Minnesota scores. No chance for Minnesota with numbers, Heisey shoots, she scores. And the slot shoots, and she scores! Now Heisey again will score, there's the hat trick. Make no mistake about that one, is Taylor Heisey absolutely buried one. Taylor Heisey enjoyed a stellar career at the University of Minnesota, but this season was her best. She led the nation with 66 points and finished with 29 goals, good for second most. Both marks, by the way, were new career highs for Heisey. We are so happy to have Taylor with us now, including uh, all of her friends, family, teammates there. We've got a packed house at the University of Minnesota and a big round of applause for you, Taylor. First of all, how are you feeling? It's a big day. Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling good. I'm excited to be here with some of my best friends and my family, so it's awesome. You know, we heard some of the former winners talking about how winning this award is really a testament to the teammates and everybody that helped get you to this point. Can you echo those thoughts? How much has your team meant to you? Yeah, I mean, this team means everything. I've said it before, but I gained 24 um, awesome sisters this year and having just such a big support system. Um, I have a great family, great friends. Uh, them showing up for me every single day, you can't really ask for more than that. I know you guys didn't get the ultimate goal, which is, of course, to win the national championship, but how would you describe what this season was like for you after a pretty crazy last couple of years? Was it a little bit of a sense of return to normalcy this year? 
Yeah, I think after COVID and after us not getting a bid last year, um, we came in with a new attitude this year. And I think it was shown like the entire season. We played 60-minute games all through the year. I think we showed and um, proved that we could stick with whoever we played with and whoever came to play us. And um, I mean, with the success that we had this year, obviously it didn't end the way we wanted to, but I wouldn't give up the season for anything with these girls. Well, despite all the success over the years that the Golden Gophers have had, it's pretty incredible to think that only two Golden Gophers have won this award to this point. What would it mean to you to be the third? Yeah, I mean, it'd be awesome. This has been a dream of mine since I was young, but obviously, like, I wouldn't be here without my support system, without my friends, without my family. Um, obviously, the U of M has had some pretty amazing athletes and, and people as well, so it's weird that there's only been two, but to be the third, it would be awesome. Well, Taylor, we heard Chrissy Wendell already saying that she's rooting for you. I see a whole bunch of people behind you rooting for you as well, including all of Gopher's family everywhere. So uh, congratulations on all your success to this point, and uh, good luck. Thank you so much. All right, Gabby Hughes is our next finalist. She is of the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. She followed up her outstanding first three seasons with a senior year to remember. The Lionel Lakes Minnesota native earned first team All-American honors and became the seventh player to be named a top three finalist for the Patty Kazmaier Award. Hughes has also had a major impact off the ice and is nominated for the Hockey Humanitarian Award, which is presented annually to hockey's finest citizen a student athlete who makes significant contributions to not only their team, but also the community at large through leadership in volunteerism. Yeah, Gabby Hughes completed her senior season with the University of Minnesota Duluth. She registered a career-high 59 points, which was tied for third most in the nation. Also, her 37 helpers were tied for fifth in college women's D1 hockey. And we welcome Gabby in now. Oh, boy, you've got a lot of teammates there as well. What has this whole morning been like for you? It's been crazy and an amazing experience. I have my family, friends, and Teammates, staff all here with me and had a breakfast and now we're all just sitting here watching the show and having an amazing time. So it's it's definitely a morning to remember. And speaking of your teammates, I know your line mates with 2020 Patty Caz winner Elizabeth Jaguer. Did she give you any words of advice for just kind of handling the nerves on this day? <laughs> Yeah, I think her the best words of advice she gave me was just enjoy every second of it. Um, and that's what I'm what I'm trying to do. The nerves are going to be there, but um, just enjoying every single moment with my friends and family. We mentioned that you do some really great work in the community as well. Something called Sophie's Squad is very near and dear to your heart. Can you tell us what that organization is and what you're trying to do? Yeah, Sophie's Squad is a nonprofit organization that's just a advocacy and awareness for mental health um, from youth to college and um, we are just trying to gain awareness and let everyone know that it's okay to not be okay and just starting a conversation can be super important and save save a lot of lives and maybe if you start a conversation it can save somebody else's as as well as your own. So just Sophie Squad is raising awareness and helping everyone that we can with mental health. Well, it certainly sounds like you're just such a well-rounded person overall in all your endeavors academically and in the community and certainly on the ice as well. We heard some of the former Patty Kaz winners talking about what it meant to them to, to win this award and almost try to continue to give back to the hockey community. What's next for you? Yeah, um, it's hard to say what's next. Uh, there's a lot of things that I want want to be next, but uh, number one is just giving back to the community through Sophie Squad, and I think that's my number one thing right now is just to keep that going and, and get that bigger and get the word out of mental health and just focusing in on that through not only hockey players but other athletes as well. So um, working through that after, after college is going to be super important and, and fun for me to do. One last one for you, Gabby. I know your dad actually played uh, college hockey at Minnesota State. So how big of an impact has he had on your college career? Oh, unbelievable. Um, both my brothers played hockey as well. So having that family 
base around the sport is something that brings us together, but also just lets us have a lot of fun with it. And I think my dad has motivated me in a lot of different aspects of life, but through hockey, he's definitely kept me going with the sport when things get tough. He's, he's one of the people that helps me understand mistakes happen throughout the game. And he's really put that in my mind. So the support I've had through, through my family has been absolutely amazing. Well, Gabby, thanks so much for the time. You are amazing as well. Congratulations on all your success to this point. Thank you so much. When we come back here, Sophie Jakes and the Ohio State Buckeyes made history at the Women's Frozen Four as the Ohio State Buckeyes won their first ever national title. After the break, we'll chat with the Buckeyes defender and Patty Kazmaier Award finalist. Ohio State, maybe 26.8 away from a national title. In the slot, cleared, and Ohio State is done. National champions for the first time. The Buckeyes have reached the top of the mountain. What a year, 32 wins, a program record, and a national championship. The first for Ohio State Buckeyes women's hockey championship trophy belongs to Ohio State. Yes, the Ohio State Buckeyes won their first ever women's D1 Ice Hockey National Championship. And Sophie Jakes was a huge part of that effort. The Buckeyes defender is the first Ohio State player to be nominated for the Patty Kazmaier Awards, so already making history, and she joins us now. Uh, congratulations, first and foremost, on a great individual season that's gotten you to this point. But I see that beautiful trophy just sitting over your left shoulder there. So <laughs> how would you do yeah, Just conveniently going to be sitting right there. Uh, I know your teammates are there right now. How have you enjoyed this past week as national champions, and how would you describe this magical run to the championship? No, it's definitely been a lot of fun. Uh, it was a great season. I mean, it just shows all the work we've put into this program over the years, and we're all just so happy to have won the national championship. So are you guys, what, parading it around the campus? I mean, what's life been like now <laughs> as national champs? Yeah, no, we've brought it everywhere with us this week. Just try to show it to as many people as we can. <laughs> Yeah, go rub it in the faces of all the football players, right? And the basketball players. It's been a little bit for them. So you guys are now national champions. Uh, that's awesome stuff. You know, I was reading that you're a civil engineering major. So not only are you very busy with all the work that you've done on the ice, but you're pretty busy off the ice as well. Do you expect to eventually work in engineering? What's the dream there? Yeah, no, I definitely, I want to get my master's in engineering as well. So then hopefully entering the workforce after college in engineering as one of my goals as well. Okay, and then of course on the ice, we'd love to see you continue your career if that's something that you choose to do. We've heard some of the, the former Patty Kaz winners talking about how they've tried to stay in the sport in di various capacities the rest of, of really their adult life. Is that something that interests you? Yeah, no, I definitely love to help grow the game and just trying to get more kids into the sport and help out in whatever way I can. I know off the ice, you've been an active volunteer as co-vice president of something called Shiro. So what is the mission of that organization and what's your role? Uh, yeah, no, as the vice president, I just help with planning events and uh, getting our group together, whatever we can. And it's just a group of all the minority female student athletes here at Ohio State. And we just use that as a safe space to talk about any issues we're having and just have open discussions. Well, that sounds like you're doing great work, uh, not only just there at Ohio State, but for the game at large. But going back to just the Buckeyes program, we mentioned this is obviously the first national championship for the program. Uh, you are the first Patty Kaz finalist in the program's history. And so how have you seen the Buckeyes program develop even in your short time there? Yeah, no, it's definitely grown ever since Muzzy's taken over the program. It's had uh, it's been great ever since and just all the great players we've had go through here and just having the continuous support of our alums and the school behind us has allowed us to be successful. Well, you're certainly paving the way for Buckeyes to come for generations. So congratulations on all your success to this point and good luck going forward. Thank you. All right, the growth and popularity of women's hockey has been evident over the past few years, right? And part of the reason why has been the women's involvement with the NHL. Kendall, of course, laced them up in the fastest skater competition, as well as other women who have participated at All-Star Weekend. And we are hearing more and more women's voices, not only here on NHL Network, but throughout NHL game broadcasts. Someone who has been an advocate for the growth of women's hockey is NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman. 
The Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award was established a quarter century ago to celebrate the very best in women's college hockey and to honor a true pioneer of our game whose passion on and off the ice remain an inspiration to so many. The list of the previous 24 winners and each year's finalists reads like a who's who of women's hockey. It includes national champions, world champions, and Olympians. The National Hockey League salutes them and the countless players, coaches, and supporters who have contributed to the enormous growth of girls and women's hockey. The three impressive women who have been named finalists for the 2022 Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award, Taylor Heisey of the University of Minnesota, Gabby Hughes of the University of Minnesota Duluth, and Sophie Jakes of Ohio State University are worthy successors to that tradition of excellence. Congratulations, Taylor, Gabby, and Sophie, and congratulations to the USA Hockey Foundation upon 25 years of recognizing the best in our sport through your presentation of the Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award. Thank you, Commissioner. Of course, all of our nominees are fully deserving, but only one can win this year's Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award. We'll give it out after this. Welcome back to the show. The moment to give out the 2022 Patty Kazmaier Award for the top player in Division I women's hockey is almost here. Will it be Minnesota sniper Taylor Heisey? Or how about Minnesota Duluth's Gabby Hughes, who has made her mark on and off the ice? It could be Ohio State's Sophie Jakes. Will she follow up a national title with the most prestigious individual award in the sport? We're about to find out. But first, take a look at the amazing numbers these ladies have put up this season. Taylor Heisey leading all D1 women's players with 66 points. Sophie Jakes leading all defensemen in both goals and points. And Gabby Hughes with a career season with the Bulldogs, 22 goals and 59 points. And you can see these three finalists anxiously awaiting to hear if their name is called as the winner of this year's Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award. Laura Halderson is a former teammate of Patty Kazmaier and here with us now to announce the winner in just a moment. But first, Laura, how important is it for you to see your former teammate Patty's legacy living on each year through this award? You know, it's fantastic. And this award and this event is one of my favorites um, because not only does it keep Patty's name and legacy alive, but it really celebrates women's hockey at the highest level. It certainly does. And we love to celebrate women's hockey at all levels, especially here. So here, without further ado, the floor is yours to announce this year's winner. Okay. Here's the envelope. I know we got some nervous people. I'm nervous too. The winner of the 2022 Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award is Taylor Heisey, University of Minnesota. Well, I think they're going to need a minute to compose themselves over there at the University of Minnesota as uh, it's been nine years since a Golden Gopher has won the Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award. Uh, the whole team on hand there. I know Taylor's friends and family are there as well. I think you guys can all hear me, but I don't know over the screams if, uh, if we're getting lost there. So Taylor, if you don't mind, I do want to get you back in the shot here. There she is. You are this year's Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award winner. Describe what this moment is like for you. I'm, I'm speechless. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, that, that, I mean, that does not happen very often for me. But um, I'm just grateful to be here with my teammates, some of my best friends and my family, um, supported by the best support staff and support family support group that I could ever have. So where are mom and dad? Give them a shout out. Which one's mom and dad behind mom, us? Hi, mom. Mom's oh, there right there you go. The <laughs> mom, and dad. And my dad's right there. Do you Grandpa, have an... grandma, my brothers over there. So <laughs> everyone's here. Hey, mom, what is it like for you to see your daughter win this prestigious award? Um, it's it's special. I, 
I can vividly remember oh, right. throwing her pucks when she was like eight and she just kept saying more and more and I guess just to see her love of the game and what a great teammate she is is I guess what makes me most proud of her. Well, it really is amazing to think that uh, both your parents, Taylor, grew up or actually played college basketball rather, but but you found hockey as your passion. How did that happen? Yeah, it's actually um, really crazy, but yeah, my whole family plays basketball. Both my brothers played basketball. Um, it was kind of like a family tradition, but when I was in first grade, I actually, one of my friend's parents started an outdoor league and I was like to my parents, I'm like, why not try it? So I went out there and ended up falling in love with the game and it's, it's a freeing sport. So I feel like that's kind of why I picked it. But. <laughs> Were you one of those multi-sport athletes? Are you pretty good on the hardwood as well? Or are you only focused on hockey? Um, I would say that I had some basketball skill in the past. I'm more of a rebounder now for my brothers. So <laughs> if anything, I I'm more in the behind the scenes in the action of that. But <laughs> Well, real quick, what's next for you? What are you going to do now that you are a Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award winner? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> um, hopefully you go celebrate with my team and my family after this. But um, continuing, obviously, going to come back for a fifth year. Um, I'll be back here next year and then continuing to grow the game um, off and on the ice as well. Congratulations, Taylor. Congratulations to all of the supporting cast that you have around you. Enjoy a very special day that I'm sure you will never forget. Thank you so much. All right, we've still got plenty to come here on NHL Network, including our NHL Network showcase game between the Islanders and the Bruins, which is just moments away after the game, of course. We'll take you through a busy Saturday slate around the National with NHL tonight. And on the fly, we'll continue to wrap things up at 11 o'clock Eastern time with Lauren Gardner. What a day here on NHL Network. This year's Patty Kazmaier Memorial Award going to University of Minnesota's Taylor Heisey. The crowd down there in downtown Minneapolis goes wild for the Golden Gophers forward. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jamie Hirsch. We'll see you next time here on NHL Network.